Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, we've got a very special guest. She's an NCAA champion. She's an American national champion. All the way from Madison, Wisconsin, we've got Allie McHugh. Allie, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well. excited to get you on the podcast today um let's start let's start with the here and now you know you're one of one of the athletes who well one of many athletes really who wasn't in the budapest bubble so i i haven't gotten any I, you know you haven't raced in a while you were at the u.s open though you got to get some long course action and how 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 the u.s open go for you tell me about that experience it was really good. It was, it was awesome that USA swimming and Indiana swimming were able to set that up to make it a super safe meet for everybody. And to have it be a situation where we could go and race again, because with COVID and that happening in March, I hadn't raced in a meet and or swam long course since then. So it was huge for me to go to that meet. I was just really excited to race again. And I was just grateful for the opportunity um, to go and race there safely and, and just get up on the blocks and race again. I just feel like it was really nice for a lot of people. It's just been just training for these past months and we haven't really had a meet to look forward to. So that was something that I was like really looking forward to us open. That's what my training was being focused towards and just getting up and racing again. So it was just really nice to do that and, and be in a routine of a meet again and race and, and, learn things that I want to improve on for the next meet. And that's always the goal at every meet is to just race and figure out areas to improve on and, and what we can do different in practice to make the next meet better. So it was really good. I was happy overall with just getting up and racing again. And um, there's things that I know that I can work on for the next meet to hopefully be better. So overall it was a, a really great experience. Yeah. How, I mean, tell me about your swims. How'd you feel about them? Um, it was good. Um, it was weird. Like I said, I hadn't, I haven't practiced really at any long course since March. So that was definitely weird. Um, but I think it was good. Um, been working on some technical stuff just to make my strokes a little bit more efficient and, um, essentially in freestyle, just really using my legs more and, and the hip to breath connection and everything in line. And, but also at the same time having that, but being aggressive when I race. So I think that was good, um, in the freestyle races. Like I had some good competitors, a lot, like some younger girls that were really fast and that was good to race and be pushed. Um, cause that's what you like to do in racing. You like to have it be a good race and have someone push you. And so that was really awesome. And overall I was, I was pretty happy with the times. Um, I think it was um, like the, a uh, stepping stone, like that's where we're at. And then we know what to improve on. Um, I think just not having raced long course, my race strategy, I didn't, I haven't raced a mile since nationals in August. So that was, it was weird for my body to wrap my brain around the concept of doing a mile. Um, but it's, I mean, I'll do it again at the meet in January, hopefully in Richmond. So, um, I'm excited for that. And then, just to know what I have to do differently. And yeah. Yeah. Let's take it back to March. You know, what's, what's your quarantine situation been like? What, what is these, <laughs> what is, what is 2020 looked like for you? Um, it has been crazy. Um, I'm sure everyone feels that way. Um, but yeah, so back in March, I, w uh, competed in Des Moines and then, um, straight from the Des Moines meet, I went to the Olympic training center. We were having a national team camp there. So, um, I was there for, I think maybe about a week and a half, two weeks for the camp. And I think at Des Moines, we didn't really like COVID wasn't really a thing that was like on people's mind. Like it was just like, <laughs> it, it's kind of overseas and it wasn't like a, a, a thing that was going to be a threat to us here. And then all of a sudden at the Olympic training center, it was just like a complete 360. And it was just like, we're shutting down. You guys have to go home. Like we can't do it. Like you need to wear your masks. Like, so it was very like, things were changing by the hour 
I mean, we were there for about a week. And then I think one day they were like, okay, you have to be out by like three days from now. So then they were like, plan how you're going to come and go home. And then the next day it was like, no, actually you have to go home today. (laughs) Um, And then the next hour, then we had practice later that day. And it was like, oh no, you can stay till tomorrow. It was just things constantly changing. It was like an hourly update, hourly changes. Um, And then I came home from that camp and I was here back in Madison for maybe another week. And Bita and I were traveling like an hour and a half to a pool and we were just doing singles because that was the only pool in the area that was available. Um, but again, like with everything shutting down slowly, that really only, um, went on for about a week. And then, um, all the pools were shut down in the area and I had a conversation with Eric and he was just, uh, said, I think it would be beneficial for you to go home. Like be with family during this time because we're not going to be training and I live on my own here. So it would just, it was better for me mentally to go home and, and spend some time with family and just kind of refocus. And at that point, um, a few weeks later, we had found out that trials weren't happening. And then we were waiting on to hear if the Olympics were going to get postponed as well. So I spent about, I think six or seven weeks at home. Um, maybe close to eight. And I think six of those, I was out of the pool. Um, so that was the longest time I've been out of the water in a long time. Um, so it was nice. I haven't, I also haven't spent that much undivided time with family since I, before I left for college. So that was definitely a unique situation. (laughs) Um, but it was good. It gave me a chance to have a lot of conversations with Eric and, and, after we found out that trials and the Olympics were pushed back, we got to, we just sat down and had a lot of, a lot of conversations, just reevaluating my goals, what we wanted to do for the next year, how we wanted to attack training um, and lay all that out so that we had a plan when we did come back. And we knew that coming back was going to be slow with me being that, that much time out of the water, but we were going to, he had a plan and we kind of got back into the water slowly and, I got back to Madison in June and then um, have just been luckily able to have pool space since then. So I've been super grateful for that. Uh, now, where is home for you? Home is in Philly. So Philadelphia, PA. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And so when you had that conversation with Eric about reevaluating goals, I mean, did a lot change for you? Was it pretty much still the same track? Just maybe a different road to get there or, or did your goals change? Um, I think we reevaluated, like, I think, um, going into trials, I don't, I think we had some times in mind, but I don't think we had like really laid them out and like discussed how I wanted to swim it, how I wanted to split it race strategy. Um, and really look into like what areas of my race that I needed to improve on in order to make that happen. So a lot of that conversation was watching my race video, watching a lot of national teamers and um, like international swimmers and races that I've swam against them and kind of picking things that I wanted to work on and how we were going to tailor training in order to do that. So a lot of that was really coming up with some concrete like goals. And um, we were just grateful because in a way it was kind of another year to prepare And we talked about things that we thought maybe didn't work with my training and things that did work. So maybe we would do more of this and less of that. So it was a really good conversation to have and we laid everything out. And um, I think it just gave me a greater appreciation of what I wanted to do when I did come back, being that time out of the water and discussing all of those things. I think it was just an extra push to make those things happen. So it was a really good conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, like you said, six weeks out of the water, a lot of people in similar boats where, you know, they're saying this is the longest I've been out of the swimming ever since I started swimming. Right. Um, what did you think about specifically just having that much time out of the water? You know, what were you doing during that time physically? And then, I mean, emotionally, was that good for you? Was that hard for you? Um, yeah, I think it was a, a little bit of a roller coaster. I think, I think in the beginning, like everyone was in a different situation. So I think in the beginning, 
Um, I mean, I'm sure a lot of other people felt this way. I think I was a little more concerned about what other people were doing. Mm. I was like, oh, they still have pool time or like they are doing this and like I'm not able to do this much. So I think that was a little bit like my emotions were a little bit messed up when I was thinking about that. And I was in that frame of mind because I was just, I wasn't really focused on myself. I was just really nervous that I was out of the water and I was worried about what other people were doing and conversations with Eric and, and Keenan. It was just like, I just need to focus on me. Everyone is dealing with the pandemic the way that they can and, and whatever they have is what they have. So for me, what that looked like was just, I didn't have pool time. So it was, um, I was doing dry land. Keenan was writing me like body weight programs and I was doing that three days a week. And then the other three days a week I was doing, um, biking at a trail, um, near my house in the park. And we just, um, do like an hour on the bike and like each time try and squeeze more miles into that hour period. Um, so I think before I came back to Madison, I think I was doing like 20 something miles in like an hour or an hour and 10 minutes or something. So it was like, it, that was like the big like focus. Cause Keenan just, we thought it would be a good way. Cause I'm, I don't run and we just didn't want to risk like an injury and, and re-exposing that and, and having anything happen. But biking was a really good way for me to keep my cardio up and to get like a really good workout in and, and get a good sweat in. So um, I, I think that really helped because when I did come back to swimming, my kicking was way better than I thought it would be. So I think the biking really did help with that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's booking it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was just nonstop biking. And I was on my brother's bike, which helped like it's, it's very old and it has like <laughs> six gears. So I was on like gear six. Cause that was the only way you could like actually maintain speed. Mm. So I was, yeah, it was just essentially go for an hour <laughs> And I was just doing like loops back and forth, different directions in the park, like turning around, like one loop was three miles this way and then five miles this way. So it was just back and forth for an hour. Um, so yeah, that was, I did that on the days that I didn't have dry land. So um, was pretty much still getting a workout in every day, whether that was biking or doing a body weight program. Um, so I was still working out, but at the same time, like it's very different. You have still have much more free time. Your sleep schedule is all really weird because you don't have to go to bed super early. You're not waking up super early to do a workout. So that was a little bit of a whirlwind. And then having my whole family there at home, like, like I said, spending that much time with them was, I think we got on each other's nerves a little bit. Like I'm sure everyone did with spending time with family at home in quarantine, but it was good. I think it, uh, I think it just really helped me appreciate training more and and me moving to Madison and doing this and I really did miss it um so I think it was good for me to come back and have that time and just kind of focus on me a little bit and then so I just felt fresher when I came back from quarantine so yeah to, to, I mean tell me about that weird period because like you said I think everyone can relate to having that time having that time at home with family not having a sleep schedule uh, and ha and having more time to focus on yourself, which can be positive and that can be negative, right? Yeah, yeah, it was it was good. I mean, I think it was good to spend some time with family because with swimming and even with me in college, you're never really home that much. You maybe come home for the holidays, but for the most part, you're just seeing them in, in increments of time, not long periods. So it was nice to just, really just reconnect with them. Like, um, I think I've gotten a lot closer with my brother since I moved to college and, and spending that time with home home with him, I think was really good. Um, so in that aspect, I feel like it was good to just kind of learn how everybody works again and, and be under one household. And, and we developed kind of a routine amongst ourselves, like as a family, mm -hmm. what to do. Um, so it was good. A lot of cooking, experimented with some new meals, like did that and watched a lot of movies, just spent some quality time together, which was nice to have that because I don't really get to go home. I don't see my family very much during the year. So while I was sad that, um, that it was these circumstances, I was happy to spend some time with them. And um, yeah, so the sleep schedule was crazy. We were all over the place, but 
my brother was doing some of the workouts at home with me as well. Um, the dryland workouts. So that was nice. And all in all, it was good. Um, I think I did a lot more like focusing on myself, a lot of reading, reevaluating my goals. I did a lot of watching race video of um, Titmus from Australia and Katinka and the 400 I am just watching race video and, and what they do well and what that I think um, I could do well in the races to kind of stick with them or um, so it was a lot of like research and picking out my goals and, and specific things in the races that I wanted to work on at the same time reading a lot of books about um, like being a good teammate having the right mindset like having um, a positive mindset heading into training and how to kind of um, get rid of negative thoughts or how to turn negative thoughts into a positive and, and how to retrain, retrain your mind to do that. Um, so that was a thing. Eric gave me a lot of books to read during that time. And um, I think that was really good um, to get a different perspective and just have that time to really devote to training and learning more about the athlete that I want to be. So I was really appreciative of that as well. That all that all sounds like good stuff. Uh, yeah. The the swim nerd in me has to you you piqued my curiosity. What what do Titmus and Katinka do well in their races? What did you what secrets did you learn? Um, I from watching Titmus uh, her race video, I think her freestyle is just it's super efficient. She she grabs water really well. Her elbows are really high, but then she also gets into her catch quickly and her hips snap and it's consistent kicking the whole time. And I think for me, that's been a focus, like, because I think once I add my kick and my arms, like I feel like overall I have a really good stroke, but it's just been bringing all of it together. I think sometimes, like I tend to swing my arms sometimes. And even though my elbows are high, when I swing my arms more like not high elbow, then it throws off my hip and the timing of my breath. So a lot of it has just been watching her and kind of like doing the stroke in the mirror and like kind of feeling how I wanted to do it. And since I've been back, we've been, I'll go in on Sundays and just, just do straight freestyle drilling, like just focus on that. Um, so I'll go in for like 30 minutes and just do a little bit of like warm up, wake my body up. But then I'll also just do like 20 minutes of freestyle drilling, just really focusing on that catch to reinforce my freestyle for the week. So for her, it's just been watching how she, everything comes together. Her whole body is connected, core is connected, high elbows. The kick is pulling it all the way through. Um, and then Katinka, like we just, how she grabs water and how she swims the stroke. I think for the 400 I am for me, sometimes I think that I kind of, I go out in the fly and then I think backstroke, I, I tend to like back off the first 50 and I'm like, Ooh, I'm a little nervous. Um, but she's just go, go, go. It's like each hundred is on its own. And I don't think she's the best breaststroker, but she just, she's, she's tailored it to her strengths, um, to make it so fast still. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm taking each of my strokes and, and tailoring it to my strengths and knowing what to do and, um, the way I want to swim breaststroke, if I want it, if it's better for me to up tempo it, or if it's better for me to grab water and do less stroke count, but then that also means really driving with the kick. So it's been a lot of evaluating that and, um, getting some more like just specific stroke training during the week. Uh, so now we'll do like one day of just backstroke and then a day of just all breaststroke, a day of all fly. Um, on top of doing freestyle mile work. So it's been a lot of, uh, it's been good to see that and watch other people and, and how they do that and compare and see what I do better or what I can improve on based on what they do. So it was nice to kind of watch all of that. Yeah. So, so that just makes me wonder, um, you know, with, with trials coming up with, with the addition of the 1500 into the Olympic schedule, you know, what, do you have a particular focus between four I am four free eight free mile? I mean, do, do you plan on swimming all those? Are you, are you, it sounds like you're training for a lot of them. Um, mm -hmm. do you have one event that you're particularly excited about or just looking forward to swimming all of them? Um, yeah, I think overall I'm, I'm really looking forward to swimming all of them. I think 
when I had conversations with Eric over quarantine, we really, we committed to really focusing on the mile more. Um, last year, we didn't race the 1500 at any meets during the year. The only time I swam it was at nationals last summer. And we kind of decided that we were going to do a lot of mile paced work during the week freestyle, but that also meant racing the 1500 a lot more at meets, just doing it more often um, so that we knew like how to approach it going into trials because it was, it would be better. It's going to be better if I do it multiple times because at trials, I'm going to have to do it twice. So that was something that I'm going to have to wrap my brain around. Usually at a meet, you don't do it. You don't do the 800 twice. You don't do the 1500 twice. It's just a one-time thing. And then that's it. But at trials, it's, you're going to do it. And then like a day and a half later, you do it again, or like the next day at night, you do it again. So, um, I think it's good that we are going to race that more. I think that'll only help me at trials. And I'm really excited as of right now, I do plan on doing all of those events, the four, I am the four free, the eight free and the 1500. Um, so that's the plan as of right now. If, um, if anything would change, maybe I wouldn't do the 400 free, but, um, maybe give me an extra day of rest before the 800, but we'll see. Um, as of right now, I think I'll plan on doing all four. Um, and I'm really excited for all of them. I think like I enjoy the, I am just as much as freestyle. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to race all four. So nice. That's, (laughs) I wouldn't be, but I, it's cool (laughs) that you are. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, but so 2018 summer, you know, you, you win a national title in the 400 I am, you make the national team. You're on the pan pack team, the, the world championship team. Um, and in, in a similar vein to, you know, going back to watching race videos of Titmus of Katinka to see what they pick up, um, being in on a national team trip like those for, for the first time, what did you pick up from your USA teammates at those meets? Um, yeah, I was, I was very surprised. I wasn't, I think leading into that meet, we kind of we're more focused on freestyle and we thought that would kind of be, be my better chance of making pan packs and, and worlds. But, um, I just was in a really good frame of mind heading into the 400 I am. I didn't really feel pressured. I just was really excited to race it and it was a really good race. And I was just super excited, um, to make those teams. Like you said, it being my, one of my first international teams, like major international teams being on, um, teams with all these Olympians. Um, it was a great learning experience and just to see how they handle, how they do travel, how they manage their practices, how they train, what their mindset is like, just being around them. I feel like you pick up so many things and, um, as you do more meets, you kind of gain that experience. So I was just excited to be around them and to get a glimpse into that. Um, and they were awesome. Like, a lot, I feel like a lot of people that have been on interna- international trips before, like older swimmers or even people that are younger, but have been on some teams, they really kind of take the newcomers under their wing and really show them the ropes. So that was really nice. And like, I didn't feel like an outsider. I felt like really it was a full team effort and everyone was like in it together. So that was really good. And it was overall a great experience. I Pam Pax was awesome. Um, it was weird to just go straight from a meet to another meet. I'd never really done, like we do a meet where we fully tapered and then we've had to, got to figure out how we're going to, are we going to go back up in yardage? Are we going to just hold the taper for this period of time? So that was an experiment. Um, I think, um, it maybe didn't, it wasn't, I think I needed to go more up in yardage than I did. Um, I did go some best time at times at Pan Packs, but it was, I think in the four and free, uh, an event I wasn't expecting, but was still happy with the best time. So, um, all in all, it was really good. Um, that was my first like major team. So it was nice to be on a team with like Caleb and, and Nathan and all of those people, um, just really willing to learn and, and to teach you how, how it works, how a meet works like this. So that was really awesome. And then having had that with them, seeing everyone again, the next summer at worlds was just super nice. Cause now, you know, everybody like, you know, you're going to be training with this group, like for our training camp at worlds, I was training with the Georgia group, which is an awesome group. Um, so you got chase and Andrew Wilson and Haley and Melanie and 
uh, Jack was the coach there. So that was just super awesome. Um, Jack, Jack is a Philly guy. So we bonded over that. Right. So that was really That's awesome. Right. <laughs> yes. So he was just over the moon talking about Philly and super excited. So <laughs> that was a really awesome training group to be a part of and, and just to train with new people. And I always appreciate training with people like that, that push you in practice every day. And it was really awesome to have that leading up to worlds especially because Brooke and I didn't race until the last day at world. So it was nice to have that training group and be up in yardage with them. At at one point, Brooke and I did have to kind of do our own thing. Um, For me, my taper didn't start until like the first day of the meet, essentially. I don't really, you have a taper very long for my (laughs) taper. It's like a week. So for the whole training camp, I was like up in yardage the whole time, but like towards the end, a lot of people were going down and kind of starting their taper more. Um, so then it was kind of more tailored. I might've been doing practices on my own here and there, but for the most part, um, it was really good. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And it was just awesome to get to know these people a little bit better with being on the national team. I feel like, I don't know, for me, the national team was always like this, like pedestal and was like, Oh my gosh, this is the elite of the elite. And then to make the team for the first time, it's like, Oh my gosh, like, how do I talk to these people? Like, I don't know them very well. Like, I don't know how, how this is going to work. Um, and then just with being with teams, you get more comfortable with them and you really get to um, learn more about everybody. You get to know them really well and how they work and how they race and, and admire their training. And, um, and now when I see them at meets, it's, it's awesome to race against them and just to reconnect. And so, yeah, I've really enjoyed it since coming on the national team. It's been a great like upward trajectory, I feel like. So I just really enjoyed getting to know everybody. The way you describe the national team is certainly how, how I would feel, how I imagine a lot of swimmers feel, right? It's like a pantheon. It's like, this is, this is it. And once, you know, it's like, that's the dream to ascend there. And then once you do, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, that's really interesting. Do you, when you were training with the Georgia crew, uh, at training camp, was there a particular workout that, that sticks out to you that you remember or something, something that you did, uh, that, that was, that was memorable for you? Um, it was a lot of Jack's practices are are pretty similar to Eric's. So it was on freestyle days, it would be colors. Um, so I was pretty used to that. Um, the intervals are probably a little tighter. Um, and with racing with Chase and Haley, um, they go, they, they are, they just go during practice. And a lot of the stroke practices, like for Haley, she would just do straight butterfly. And then for me, it was kind of, okay, do we do it half butterfly, half backstroke, or do we do all four strokes? Um, it was, I think there was a practice where I was doing like hundreds or 150s of fly with like fins and paddles. And I had never done that before. I was like, Oh my gosh, my shoulders are just like, wow. Um, (laughs) but it it was good. And then once I was on my own, like Jack would like talk to Eric. Um, like when I was on my own, we did some suited practices at the end, like of camp when people were really down. So I did like suited, um, like fifties of stroke, um, just to kind of replicate like splits that I wanted to do in the 400 AM. So I think it was like four of each in a suit, um, replicate pace. And so that was really good. Um, I think I did that on a Sunday and I think I was the only one that went to the competition, went to the Singapore pool at that time. Like everyone else had the day off and me and Jack <laughs> headed over the pool and then put on a fast suit and, and did some fifties. I think it was just me, Jack, Keenan, a few of the other staff on deck and then just, just me moving along. So it was just really good to train with, um, those people. And, uh, yeah, you don't get to train with other national teamers a lot. Like we're all really spread out when we do train together. It's maybe at like an OTC camp, or if we go and visit, um, a college team for a certain amount of time to get some training in, but really we don't see them very often. So it was nice to just spend some time with them and and train with those people because you don't get to do that during the year. So, yeah. Do you, do you have a favorite training partner, um, on the national team in general, someone you've trained with before that, that really sticks out to you is, is, as being a good fit for you? Um, when I've been at national team camps, like in the past, um, 
a lot of the time, like when I was back at the camp in March, um, I raced Haley and Ashley a lot in freestyle, which I loved that because they're just super hard workers. And um, I hadn't really done like long freestyle sets with people like that. So I really appreciated that. Like they, they did their sets so well. They just like controlled their heart rate and just were able to change gears so well and just really get so fast and take practice seriously. But at the same time, like push you and motivate you. And it was really like a light, like nice environment to be a part of. Cause it was, it, yeah, it was a hard set, but we were all doing really well and we were all in the same boat. Um, so freestyle training with them at camp, um, has been awesome. I've done a few camps with Bob and the ASU crew in the past. Um, so that's been really awesome. And, and the Georgia crew has joined us in the past with that. So I, I've done a lot of like, I am sets with Chase um, and like Gunner and um, the Litherlands and things like that. So that's been awesome as well to do like an I am ladder with Chase and, and Jay and and a bunch of other national teamers. So it's been awesome. I really appreciate the time that I do spend with them because you don't get it very often. And so I really try and take advantage of those opportunities whenever I can. So, uh, j- just to clarify, when you say Haley and Ashley, Haley Anderson and Ashley Twitchell. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So, I feel like both of them, they've been around the sport for so long. Yeah. They have so much wisdom. They exactly. like you talk to them and they just, and they, and they swim open water, right? They yeah. like, can just swim mm-hmm. forever. They yeah. have this, this like wisdom and groundedness of like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this for a long time. I've been, yeah. in, I, I can do it for a long time and I can just keep going. And it's like very, they, they seem, they seem very sage and wise. Yes. Yes. It, and that, that's a big part of the reason why I do appreciate racing with them because they, um, they know their bodies so well at this point. I feel like that they know exactly how to tailor a set. They know I'm going to start at this time and then I'm going to get faster and I know how to control it. And I know like um, how to push it in what area. And um, at the same time, they're so like down to earth and like willing to have the conversation with you if you have any questions. And that's super awesome to have mentors like that on the national team for people like me and even younger swimmers. I feel like that's just so important to have, to be able to have those people around to talk to, to ask any questions, ask for advice. So that's been super awesome. And I really enjoyed training with them and having that time. Yeah. Do, are, are you someone who, um, do, I mean, do you have plans outside of the pool? Are you, are you thinking about calling it quits after after this olympic run or are you someone who's like you know i've I've got no end in sight um i don't i don't think i specifically have like a time limit or um when i would be done swimming at this point i think uh, um it'll be something that i reevaluate after trials um but whenever i am done swimming i do want to go to nursing school that's always been um a goal of mine. I love working with kids. Um, and just, it's really another passion of mine. So whenever swimming is over, I don't know exactly when that time would be, but whenever I do decide to walk away from the sport, it would, that would be my next step. Um, so I would love to do an accelerated nursing program and either work in pediatrics or, um, be a, be a, um, a neonatal intensive care nurse or something with children in the hospital setting, um, I think would just be a really awesome experience. And I think that's where I would, would want to go after swimming is done. So, uh, if, if the last year hasn't scared you away from that, I think <laughs> that it's probably meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think with this whole year, it's really made you like, a, I think everyone appreciate healthcare workers a little bit more. And, and I think before, um, I, when I was reevaluate, like thinking about what I wanted to major in, in college, I was like, uh, like, Oh, nurses, like they'll always have a job. And I feel like with the pandemic, especially this year, like that has just like really echoed like that statement has been like, there's always going to be more space for healthcare workers and there's always more people to take care of. And in situations like this, like, I think it would be good to have an extra person there. So I'm just really excited to hopefully this pandemic will um, resolve. And when, by the time that I am there, it'll just be um, 
a little bit more normal, but um, either way, I'd be happy to be there. So I'm excited to accept any of the challenges that come along with that. But I feel like it'd also be a re very rewarding thing and a rewarding career to have. So, yeah, that's said rewarding career, hopefully. Uh, yes, that seems like a very accurate statement, but, but until, you know, until then you're still swimming, which is awesome. Um, I mean, so, you know, you, you swam, you were an NCAA champion, all American at Penn state. Um, it, let, let's take it back there just for a minute. Um, tell me what drew you to Penn state and what you liked about it once you got there. Yeah, I, um, as a high school swimmer, I feel like um, I swam for my high school team and I, for my club team was suburban Seahawks, um, with Charlie Kennedy out in Newtown PA, Newtown square. Um, so I feel like at that point, I, my high school was in district 12. So I was, I was doing really well, but that was one of the like slower like districts, I guess. So, um, I was winning events and I had made States and everything, but, um, I just feel like I hadn't really reached my peak at that point. I, I feel like if I, I wanted a program that would kind of like take a chance on me and, and know that I still had an like upwards to go. I think if I was just pushed in training and everything, and then, um, right before trips started, like recruiting trips, like I think I had NCSAs in Indianapolis right before, like the summer before trips started and, that was the meet where I made my trials cuts. Um, and I found out I made those trials cuts on my way to my Penn state recruiting trip. And so when I got there, they were like super excited and congratulating me. And I think that was like a really good thing to have going into trips. Cause you're like, Oh yeah, we want an Olympic trial qualifier. Like, yeah. So that was really awesome to have that. And, um, I went to Penn state and, um, when I was looking at colleges, I didn't really think, oh, I want to be closer to home or I want to be far away. Um, I was just really looking for a team that felt like a team, like it felt connected. And I wanted a combined program and I wanted to really be able to train with a group of people that were really welcoming. And when I went on, came on campus at Penn State, it just really felt like home. And I just felt very welcomed by the team. Like, I feel like on recruiting trips, sometimes it's like awkward or, you know, but I didn't feel that way at all. Like I felt like I was just a part of the team already and the coaches were really awesome. And um, yeah, so I just, I left there and then, and after that I went on some other recruiting trips and it just didn't, didn't feel the same. Um, like my recruiting trips after that, I just like had a feeling I was just like, oh, like there was just something different about Penn State. Like I just it feels different. It just felt right. So um, I think I, I committed to Penn State like a week or two weeks after my trip. And um, it was nice to be close to home. I think that was awesome. Like my family could come up on the weekends. And then at the same time, I think it was also a crazy thing that Eric just happened to come to Penn state as my coach, um, the beginning of my sophomore year. Um, so, and then from then on, um, it's just been a crazy whirlwind of events. And I think like everything happens for a reason and Penn state like took me on and they were like, okay, we think with the right training that she can really put up some fast times. And Eric was exactly that person to do that. So, um, him coming in my sophomore year, I, I think before coming into college, I never considered that I would train beyond college. I think coming into college, I was like, Oh, I would love to make NCAAs and like compete at big tens for my team. But I didn't really have like these high goals. And when Eric came and my training was, he was pushing me harder than anyone ever has. It was some of the hardest practices ever. And it was kind of, kind of opening my eyes more and more about what it could be like, where I could go, how far I could take this. And if I took it seriously and, and things like that. And it really helped change my frame of mind. I like took it a lot more seriously and um, yeah. And from there, it's just been, I've had a relationship with him ever since moved here to continue training with him. Um, so 
it's been great. And, and Penn state, I'm super grateful that they gave me the opportunity to do that. And I enjoyed my time there and the teammates that I got to meet and train with over that time were a huge part of what I did during that time. Um, I mean, in my time at Penn state, the end of my junior year was when I made Pam packs and worlds. And a big part of that is, is thanks to them and for everything that they did for me. So I'm super grateful that that is where I went. Um, so yeah, all in all, it was a great experience. It's, I mean, it's not every instance that someone comes into college thinking, I want to make NCAA championships and they yeah. end up an NCAA champion. Yeah. Uh, not, o- not only do they make the meet, they win it. Um, <laughs> was, was there that um, maybe not, you know, aha moment or light bulb, you know, flick of where, where that mindset shifted for you from, I want to make the meet to, oh, I could win the meet. Um, yeah, I think, um, at the end of my sophomore year is when I made the Woogs team. Um, so that was like my first kind of like international team, I guess. And, um, the nationals that summer, I had done pretty well. And then I remember sitting at dinner the last night, we were trying to figure out who would make the team. Like if I would make the meet, like this person had to go this, but they're already on the team for this event. And we, me and Eric were sitting there at the dinner table, like trying to figure it out, trying to figure out who would do this event. Oh no, they're already on the team for this event. So that leaves the spot. So I think for me, like being in that conversation and being like excited and like crossing your fingers, hoping, hoping that everything lined up and you made the team. And I was just, that was just, um, kind of a, an eye-opening thing. And then after that, I, um, my junior year was when I raced Katie at NCAAs in the mile. And after that, um, with me knowing that Katie was going to, uh, Katie had then announced that she was going to not do her senior year and and she was just going to just go pro. Um, after that point, Eric was like, okay, we can do this. Like, I really think we could win this next year. And that was a crazy thing to think about. Um, you, you get second to Katie Ledecky in the mile at NCAAs and you're like, that's pretty, like, that's pretty <laughs> legit. Like that's up there. Like, how much of one. <laughs> you expect? like, you know, you're racing Katie Ledecky. So, um, that was just super awesome. And then I was just really excited. That was the goal. I really wanted to finish off my collegiate career that way. And I'm super happy with that's how I went out, kind of went out with a bang and, and kind of brought everything full circle from where I started freshman year to getting to that point and all the work I had put in and the, and the mindset shift and everything like that. So it was crazy, but I really enjoyed it. And it's crazy to think back how far I've come, but I'm super grateful for it and all the people that have helped me get to this point. So, Yeah. I mean, it's so your senior year when you did end up winning that mile, I know I, it, Eric had gone to Wisconsin at that time. Is that right? Yes. Um, and I think I talked to you at some point and I think, I think you had expressed that, that, you know, that, that made it a challenging year, um, mm-hmm. it, with, with more time to reflect on that period. Um, I mean, have, have you been able to appreciate what you were able to accomplish given, given the changes that that year brought? Yes, I do think that it's had me appreciate that time more. I think that year, it really, I really focused on the team and being a part of the team and really appreciating my senior year. Um, And I think that's what you kind of have to do your senior year. Like it's your last year on a college team. The college experience is amazing and it goes by way too fast. And so I was just super excited to just be a part of the team, to be present, to be there for mentor some of the freshmen and the underclassmen and to remind them that the time flies and to enjoy every moment. And I was super appreciative of of them supporting me as well, because with me, with Eric moving, I had planned on doing my fifth year at Penn State and just training until trials. And so that meant spacing out my degree. But with Eric moving, um, when he told me, um, I decided that I wanted to move 
um, to Wisconsin after graduation. Um, so that meant cramming all of my credits into one year. So instead of having an extra semester or a year to finish my degree, mm-hmm. I was cramming it into one year. Wow. So it was, um, I think all, in, I think my senior year, I took 40 credits Whoa. of classes. <laughs> so I think it, it, it was like 20 credits a semester. I think one was like 19 and a half and the other one was 20. So to do that for my senior year on top of training, on top of being a captain, it was a lot. Um, but it, I knew that I kind of had to just put my head down and do it because of the end goal was, NCAAs and then moving out here and really just, I knew it was all going to be worth it because I was getting all that out of the way. And then when I moved here, it would just be the sole focus would be swimming and the sole focus would be training. So it was definitely a very tough year. And I still can't believe that I did that many credits for a year. Um, but I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was crazy, but it was, it, it really helped me appreciate the time that I did have with the team because with me being so busy with classes and everything, really all I was doing was school and swimming. So when I was at the pool, I tried to make the most of the time that I did have there that I was around the team. Um, so it was really awesome and I really enjoyed that. So it was definitely worth it. I think. Nice. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize that. That's I, so, <laughs> I'm, I'm blowing, maybe I'm blowing this a little out of context. I'm not, I'm, I was never someone who is like super into school. I did fine in yeah. school and I liked school, but I was yeah. really glad when it was over and so, like, <laughs> 20 credits to me just sounds like, Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. Well, because I feel like as a college athlete, like the normal is like maybe like 12 to 15 a semester, right. like it's yeah. like three or four classes. And I think I had like <laughs> six each semester and, and I was just Crazy. like going from taking 15 and, and a lot of the semesters, I wasn't even doing that. I was doing like 13. Yeah. So taking on like a whole nother <laughs> two classes, I had like, I, I had this planner and it had like, I was like, <laughs> it was like color coded assignments. Like I knew these, like it was, and of course all my classes had assignments due either all on one day or like one every single day for a different class. So it was a color coded agenda planner. It was, I really had to figure out when I was going to do homework really maximizing my time outside of the pool as much as I could. So, uh, it was, it was crazy, but I'm definitely happy. Um, you know, it was all worth it in the end. I moved out here and then it's been, it's been great. So. Yeah. So, so since you've been out there, um, I guess, I guess, and really since you've been back post we're in the pandemic, but you know, since you've been back in whenever you got back in in June or in the spring Mm -hmm. or summer, um, how, how has that transition been of just having swimming be the sole focus? Are you someone who can really do that and just, you know, kind of, kind of lay around the rest of the time or, or, you know, just not have, have a whole lot of other activities or are you someone who needs, who needs to be stimulated and be doing something else while you are focusing on training as well? Um, yeah, I'm definitely someone that like thrives with a routine. I think yeah. that's why I was like, even though my senior year was crazy, I just, I liked having the structure. I liked having a routine. I liked knowing when I would do this, I would do this at this time, every single day practice would be the same here. And then I would do work at this time every single day. So it's been different to now factor in things to fill up that free time where there would still be structure, but then where it would also benefit my training. So now it's factoring in, okay, when I'm going to eat a meal, when I'm going to practice, when I'm going to nap during the day, when I'm going to do recovery, whether that be Norm Attack or ice bath or things like that. But then there's also, do I want to devote time to reading or doing yoga or things just to mentally just do for me that are separate from the pool where I can kind of take my mind away from it and just focus on something else for a period of time. So I'm still like, I think you can still learn how to do that. I think there's never a point where you're going to be completely satisfied, satisfied with a routine. There's always new things that you can try to fill that time and new things that you can learn and new books to read and things like that. So um, now I feel like with having being, I think I've been in Madison now for about a, over a year, year and a half now. And I think I've like finally gotten to a routine where I, I've been able to lay things out well. And I know how to like structure my weekends to prepare for the week and when to do recovery and what I'm going to need for recovery based on how I'm feeling. Um, so all in all, it's been really good. 
with that. Um, so yeah, things have been going well. And it, it was weird definitely to have going from 40 credits to having all of this free time and how, how am I going to manage that? Um, and like I said, I'm still learning, but I think I've definitely gotten a better handle on that. So. Nice. And so, so to wrap this up, uh, moving forward, um, you know, what are you, what are you looking forward to in the, just the next couple of weeks, couple of months, you've got, we've obviously got trials in Tokyo on the horizon, but you know, it's still a ways away. Um, what are you excited about just getting back in the pool, getting back into training, uh, for December and January? Yeah, I'm really excited. I think, um, my training has, um, been really consistent lately and, and that's super awesome. I think for me, um, I've been training on my own for a while now and, um, I don't see that changing anytime soon. So it's really just been me and Eric, um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time and I'm just practicing on my own. And a lot, a lot of that is to just with COVID to just to really be safe and, and just, you know, just be on my own. And, and, um, but I'm super grateful to have that time in the new pool here. So training has been awesome. And I think coming off of us open, we know, what to improve on and what I want to do better for the next meet. So that's just kind of been my thing to focus on for training. And I'm super excited to just um, kind of now have my routine down now and have another year to prepare, have these more months to prepare for the meet um, and just keep training consistently, get some more racing under my belt in the beginning of the year. I'll go to the Richmond meet in January, hopefully. And so I'm really excited and looking forward to that and just, keep training and, and grateful to have a pool and, and be training during this time and, and appreciating every moment. And I think for me with practice every day, I, I think obviously everyone isn't going to be perfect every single day, but for me, a lot of conversations that I've had with Eric is um, chasing excellence every day, whatever that means, whatever that means for that day, that's what it's going to be. That's going to be my goal. And that's been kind of my mindset going into practice. Just what is my what is excellence going to be that day for me, whether it's the time, whether it's focusing on the details, whether it's focusing on stroke count or kickouts or stroke technique, anything like that. So that's kind of been my mindset heading into practices and, and it's been going really well. It's been consistent and I'm, I'm really excited uh, for the rest of this year and for it to keep going that way and to get some more meets under my belt heading into trials. And I just think it'll be really exciting. I think now that people, it's getting closer, we're kind of like, Oh, okay. It's coming again. Like this is exciting. And, and we, we have a date and we have a time and we know when this is going to happen. And, and everyone has been um, maybe more back to training now. And so I think everyone's just getting really excited again with the holidays. And it's, it's once that calendar turns to 2021, it'll be the real deal. It'll be okay. We are here. Yeah. So I am really excited for that. And, uh, yeah, just really looking forward to the rest of the year training and, and learning some new things about how to race and race strategy and doing some meets. So it'll be really good. I'm excited. Well, Ali, I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with me for a little bit. Um, before we sign off, just any parting thoughts? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think like, um, it's been awesome during this time. I think it's, it's been a way for me to appreciate the sport way more than I did in the past. And um, I know that everyone has had their different um, situations with the pandemic and, and everything, but I feel like um, everyone's been doing the best that they can. And I think that's the way you have to look at it. Like do the best that you can um, and just whatever that means for a given day. And that's kind of what I've been doing and, and how I've been taking it day by day, practice by practice and, and meet by meet. So um, yeah, I'm excited to see everyone at trials and, and to race and, and be around the team and be around those girls and it'll be a great time. So I'm really excited and this new year, hopefully we'll bring some new times and exciting times and that'll be really great to look forward to. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.